We love watching the Harry Potter movies over and over, but have you ever noticed how weird some of the scenes are? We've got 10 of the creepiest scenes in Harry Potter that need to be addressed. Keep watching to find out who the creepiest character of all time is. I don't believe you. She wants me looked at. Draco Malfoy really caused a problem in Prisoner of Azkaban when he claimed that Buckbeak had injured him. Oh, it's killed me. It's killed me. First of all, he was barely hurt, and second of all, he completely ignored Hagrid's instructions. But thanks to Lucius Malfoy's pull at the ministry, Buckbeak got a sentence of capital punishment. Poor Hagrid tried his hardest to appeal the case. He even had Hermione's help. But when the day came for Buckbeak to meet his end, the Minister for Magic showed up with an executioner. This guy was so creepy. He was like a medieval executioner. We know the wizarding world can be a little stuck in the past, but did he really need to be wearing a full leather hooded mask? And did this guy's full-time job revolve around executing animals? Cause that's messed up. Why does the ministry need someone like that on staff? Plus, he was planning to use an axe on Buckbeak's neck. Buckbeak, here enough to call the condemned, shall be executed this day at sundown. But they're wizards. There has to have been a more humane way to carry out the ultimate punishment. Even Avada Kedavra would have been more humane. The whole executioner thing just seems unnecessarily creepy. Oh, executioner, your services are no longer required. Thank you. Okay, we have to admit, of all the fantastic beasts in Harry Potter, Thestrals are the creepiest. They're kind of like horses, but they don't look altogether alive. They're all bony, and they don't have hair. When Harry sees them for the first time in Order of the Phoenix, he is understandably freaked out. To make matters worse, no one else except Luna sees them. His friends think he's crazy. Later, Luna explains, They can only be seen by people who've seen death. Isn't that creepy? We have to wonder what J.K. Rowling was thinking when she came up with that. But the Thestrals present a huge plot hole too. Harry can now see them because Cedric Diggory fell to an Avada Kedavra earlier that year. But Harry has seen other people go before that. As a baby, he watched Voldemort cast the same spell on his mother. He remembers it enough to hear her screams when the Dementors are close. And he watched Quirrell meet his end in the Sorcerer's Stone. So why is he now just seeing the Thestrals? We fly, of course. Snakes are a very real phobia for millions of people, so Chamber of Secrets is extra creepy for those who are scared of slithering beasts. The basilisk is a huge magical snake. Salazar Slytherin put it in the deepest parts of the school when he built his Chamber of Secrets. Seriously, why was that guy allowed to be around kids and start a school? When the chamber is open, the basilisk starts moving through the school, through the pipes and attacking the people. Its gaze can petrify muggleborns or worse. Wait a second, look how huge that thing is. Just how big are the pipes at this school? Anyway, Harry goes into the chamber to save Ginny. Yes, Potter. The process is nearly complete. In a few minutes, Ginny Weasley will be dead. And he meets the basilisk. This giant snake, which has venom in its fangs, bites a 12-year-old boy. One of its fangs literally comes out in Harry's arm. This movie was rated PG. That seems extra graphic and creepy. Plus, there's another plot hole in the later movies. We find out that basilisk venom can kill a horcrux. Why didn't that bite kill the horcrux that was inside Harry? It's all right, Ginny. It's over. Poor Remus Lupin. He was one of the saddest stories in all of Harry Potter. He was bitten by a werewolf as a young boy. Becoming a werewolf every month makes him feel ill for days. There are so many anti-werewolf laws that he has a hard time finding a job. He's so discriminated against. Then he loses all of his best friends as a young man. Plus, he has no control over the beast that he becomes. And Lupin is one of the kindest men in the entire series. Eat. You'll feel better. In Prisoner of Azkaban, the hunt for Sirius Black distracts him from the full moon. He forgets to take the wolf's bane potion, which would calm his inner wolf, and then he starts to turn in front of Harry and the others. The transformation is extra freaky. It looks so painful when his body contorts, but can we talk about what the werewolf looks like? Does that look like any wolf you've ever seen? He's a creepy half-man, half-beast thing. Why do his arms and legs look so human? It's really bizarre. And don't take any detours. If you do, I shall know. 
The basilisk isn't the only creepy thing in Chamber of Secrets. Everything about Gilderoy Lockhart made us really uncomfortable. We want to know exactly what Dumbledore was thinking when he hired him to be the defense against the dark arts teacher. Lockhart is so full of himself that he makes Draco Malfoy seem humble. We realize just how arrogant he is when Harry meets him at the bookstore. With my entire collected works, free of charge. Then, Lockhart proves really quickly that he is completely incompetent at his subject. He can't even take care of Cornish Pixies. He gets extra creepy when he makes Harry help him sign fan mail. How is that remotely appropriate for a student? Lockhart just gives off such a creeper vibe. We could have forgiven him if he was just dumb and arrogant, but he was malicious too. He wipes people's memories and takes credit for their actions. You first, Mr. Potter. Say goodbye to your memories. He planned to obliviate Harry and Ron, who were just kids. We are so glad that spell rebounded, causing Lockhart to lose his memory. Hello. Who are you? Um. Who can forget the mountain troll from the Sorcerer's Stone? This scene was crucial, because that's when Hermione became friends with Ron and Harry. Hermione had run off to the bathroom crying after Ron insulted her. At dinner, Quirrell announced that there was a- Of course, he was the one who let it in. Ron and Harry ran after Hermione and saved her from the troll. But let's take a look at this troll. This thing had giant warts all over his feet and legs. His gross belly hung over his pants. And just look at that face. He was so creepy. Honestly, we think Hermione handled seeing this creature pretty well. She didn't even scream till he knocked down the bathroom stall. But then the scene got disgusting. Harry stuck his wand up the troll's nose. Once Ron knocks the troll out, Harry pulls out his wand, and it's covered in troll snot. That was completely unnecessary. We hope you weren't eating when you watched that scene. Who was the creepiest person in the whole series? Keep watching to find out. No any spells? One. This next scene is also from The Sorcerer's Stone. Quirrell is really a strange character throughout the whole movie. Oh, nice to meet you. Fearfully fascinating subject. When Harry makes it to the mirror of Erisay to get the Sorcerer's Stone, we find out why the defense professor is so weird. He has Voldemort living on the back of his head. Talk about creepy. Okay, we get that Voldemort's soul didn't have a body to live in, so he more or less possessed Quirrell. But was having his face on the back of the poor guy's head really necessary? This was such a bizarre scene, and it was kind of terrifying. Now we just have questions. Did Quirrell have hair before Voldemort's face popped up? How did Voldemort's face feel about showering? And did it hurt when Quirrell laid down on his head? Honestly, it's kind of hilarious to think about those things, but it sure was a strange way to bring Voldemort back. Tell me, Harry, would you like to see your mother and father again? Voldemort isn't just evil, he is a total creep, and one extended scene showed exactly how strange he is. Oftentimes, the movies take out some of the best scenes from the books. This is true with any franchise, but every now and then, the movies add a priceless moment. This scene was from the extended cut that was released on DVD. When everyone thinks Harry has fallen victim to the Avada Kedavra curse, Voldemort and the Death Eaters come back to Hogwarts. He calls Draco back over to his side. Draco and praises him. Draco did not want to go back to the evil side, but to make matters worse, Voldemort decides to hug him? Why? It's so out of character for him. He is not a warm and cuddly villain at all, and the hug will make you cringe. It's clear Voldemort has no clue what he's doing, and we can feel Draco's discomfort through the screen. We aren't quite sure what the directors were trying to accomplish here, but it sure was creepy. And who might you be, young man? Ah, oh, Mad Eye Moody. This paranoid Auror was meant to be a creepy character, and one thing that made him extra weird was his eye. He had lost an eye in some sort of fight with a dark wizard, so he replaced it with a magical eye. It could see all around him, and it constantly turned around and around, but that's not even the freakiest part of his eye. Now the minister says you're too young to see what these curses do. I say different! That honor belongs to Dolores Umbridge. Now, 
Umbridge is definitely a creep in her own right. The collection of cat plates is more than a little unsettling, but somehow, after Moody is taken out by Death Eaters, she gets her hands on his magical eye. She doesn't wear it though, she puts it on her office door. It's freaky, and it's really disrespectful, but this woman is something else. She wants to keep an eye on all the people working for her, literally. That scene really took the creepy factor up a notch. Umbridge is the worst. I really hate children. We know that Voldemort is a total creep. It's part of his whole villain vibe. But you know who is even creepier than Lord Voldemort? Young Tom Riddle. Honestly, we expect to feel unsettled when we see Voldemort. He's got no nose, after all. The creepiness is even worse when he's just a boy. When Dumbledore goes to meet Tom Riddle in the orphanage, we get chills every time. He's got the horror movie stare down to an art, and then he goes on to tell Dumbledore that he can make people hurt if he wants to. I can make bad things happen to people who are mean to me. I can make them hurt. And it's clear that he enjoys doing it. Dumbledore should never have taken him to Hogwarts. Tom also has a picture on the wall of some cliffs in the sea. It's the same place Harry and Dumbledore go to find a Horcrux. It's not addressed in the movies, but in the books, the head of the orphanage revealed why it's significant. Tom had lured some orphans there on holiday. It's not clear what he did to them, but they were never the same again. Can you say creepy? Which scene from the Harry Potter series gives you the chills? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. For more fun videos from The Things, be sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.